It is one thing to know God. It's another thing to have information about God. For instance, it is only a wife that can categorically tell you that she knows her husband. There are a lot of things you can know about the man. All you know is about him. It is easy to read. It is easy to ask questions for people to give you their perspective on a matter or on a person. And when you put together everything you are able to assess from third parties here and there about that particular person or a thing, all you have about that whole thing or person is knowledge about them. It is until you are able to interact with that person one-on-one, -on -one, until you can strike a, a working relationship, that is when you know the person. Spirits don't accept you know a thing until you and that thing become one. This is what they mean when they say a man knows a woman. It is to come into intimate knowledge of her. The, in fact, in the world of spirits, they interpret sex as to know a person. So they say that Jacob knew Rachel. That no there is for both of them to become intimately one. And it is only when you come into a full knowledge of a person, that's the only way that spirits agree that you know a thing. Not too many people know God. At best, what we have is the knowledge of God. We know about God. There are many of us sitting here, we have assortments of scriptures loaded and choked in our mind. Unfortunately, we heard somebody quote it. There are many things we carry as revelations that the route that you secured those positions from are because you heard it from the mouth of a minister. It's not something that was revelatory introduced to you. It's not something that was handed to you as a token of koinonia. It's not something that was given to you as a token of intimacy. It is because you heard another. And so it has come as knowledge. Meanwhile, when you speak from your head, it will go to people's head. You can have so much head knowledge about God and God will not be in your heart because there are cadres to these things. You will know when you have believed a scripture only when you can begin to power out, bring out the life content of that scripture. What is your first response when calamity breaks out around your life? If it is not that scripture that is in your head, the scripture is not in your life yet because you can have a scripture in your head but it has not become one with you. It has not attached itself to your being. If it has attached itself, it will become life. There are three cadres of every revelation. The first layer of revelation is narrative. Is narrative. And that's what Jesus summed up when he says, I am the way. The way means a narrative posture of revelation. The way is like an essay telling you a narration about something that happened. Everybody can interact with the way. In fact, even Gentiles, they have an accurate perspective of the way more than some of us who are believers. They can give you a detailed account of Bible stories because they read it, but it has not convicted them. They have not changed on account of what they have. If you can quote a Bible verse, if you can tell the stories of the various patriarchs of the scripture and your life is not in tandem with the demand of consecration. It is a direct emphasis on the matter I'm sharing about. It has not become life in you. So all you have is the way. Even Gentiles can relate to the way. And when you have possession of the way, it does not in any way change or put you under pressure to align your steps to the demand of God. Why do people go and study philosophies sometimes they study religious philosophies get a degree in it people study even theology and they don't have the holy ghost people are doctorates of theology and they don't know jesus we have crs teachers that are not born again we have CR crk teacher telling people about the jesus they don't know and so it is not about the way the way is narrative you can have head knowledge, but the, the, the life that that thing is supposed to quicken, you don't have it because there are cadres to these things. So I go about and share with you how even... You see, what I want to tell you now is a proof on ground. There is a Muslim man that is teaching CRS. His convictions are different from the subject he's teaching. So for him, it's just a course. It's, it's the way you come and take, take, take intro tech or you take inter-science. 
or you take basic science. So for him, it's just something to read and come and teach. This is unfortunately, as we're shaking our head, this is unfortunately the only cadre of encounter many of us have with God. It's only information. No life yet. How do you know that this thing that is in your head, how do you know it has entered your life? It is when you can sweatlessly see that the normal posture of your corporate being is in alignment with this information. It is only head knowledge if your life is still living in rebellion to what you have in your heart. Such that you know what is God's position on every subject matter, but obedience is far from your borders. Head knowledge. Tonight we are attempting to see how we can carry that which we have known and press it until it becomes life. So that that which is revelatory can become experiential. Until then, there will be a massive disparity. Ah, you will be shouting, I shall not die, and you will die. You will post stickers on your car saying 2024, my year off, and there will be nothing of that in your life. Because you are a creature of so much knowledge, but very little performance, very little manifestation. What is the connection between knowledge and manifestation? This is why we are gathered this evening. For some of us, if everything in your head can enter your life, you will become a sign and a wonder immediately. You know so much, but only little of what you know, your life is a proof of. Sometimes there is need to take a retreat. You know the retreat? You will put a stop to amassing knowledge. Let's wait, wait. There's, we have known so much already. Let's try and domesticate the ones we know first. Well, let, let's not add another layer of knowledge. This one we know. Can we press it into our life? The diseases of the Egyptian shall not come near me. I shall be the head and not the tail. Look at the myriads of prophecies and testimonies that is in your back and call. However, your life is not a proof of one. It is a good time to put away all of these noise and activities. Let's carry few scriptures. Sometimes take four promises and say, Lord, I know you are not a liar. I know these things were not designed to be informative. He says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are not information. Jesus is not a lecturer. He is a dispenser of life. He says the first Adam was made a living soul, but the last Adam was made a life giving spirit. How does he give that life? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. So he never gave us these words for information. He was transferring life. Unfortunately, when men interacted with the oracles of life, all they could do with it is to amass knowledge and begin to walk like cherubs among men. But our manifestation is a proof that we don't have life. Can we pray for one minute? Can we pray for one minute? I will not tell you what to tell him now. But I believe a river, a river, a river is welling on your inside. I don't want to stay where men stay. I don't want to stay with my generation. I want to carry life. Yes, streams of revelations. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow.